considerably uh, shrunk, but there are still huge missing features here as well. But now we have uh, we have something solved here, and uh, also uh, some areas went from bad to good. So that's uh, also a little bit of progress. And uh, just a little bit of overview for uh, legacy formats for DOC, XLS and RTF. Uh, these are just here for reference. Maybe next year I will, I will be able to show some, some real progress. PPT is uh, missing because that uh, sucks pretty bad, uh, even in the auxilia. So uh, I was uh, back talking a little bit about this uh, bad and good, bad and ugly. It's the same definition as last year. Uh, I will not repeat it, so 85% and 60 between. 85 and 60 and below 60% solved. Uh, okay, some end of talk highlights for uh, most important bugs. Um, I will not read it all. Uh, the number in the mm, brackets uh, means uh, the number of uh, duplications in the bugzilla. So we have some which I find more important, but other people have not been filing a lot of bugs about them. But uh, this does not mean I'm wrong and people are just don't are just not caring. You may say that um, 11 complaints about or 12 complaints about continuous section breaks is not a lot. We have hundreds of millions of users or even just ten, tens of millions. But um, these are only the people who are getting into Bugzilla and the, the, that's a big filter, I believe. So it would be really nice to uh, find some customer or even the foundation to fund these uh, improvements. Uh, yes, question? Uh, well, two of them. First, really, I, I really want to ask you to try to speak up a bit because sometimes I, I just can't hear what you're saying. Okay. <laughs> I have to follow the slide. And the, the second point is that you, you gave an example here of um, a bug or an issue that's really depending on a significant structural feature that we're missing as an application, an ODF yes. is missing more, more or less, and and that's so that's one kind of issue, and, and there are different, well maybe some issues that depend on it. If you if you could, um, uh, I I know you might not have the numbers for this, but if could you like give a rough estimate of how many um, uh, of our uh, incompatibility bugs are the, are due to these like deeper structural issues, and mm -hmm. how many are just bugs? Um. So most of the twenty nine that I have still on the list here are these sort of uh, structural issues. And uh, not just uh, mm, importing and exporting the same thing uh, which is working for ODF, but uh, not for OXML. No, these are the real uh, bad, bad issues which need also feature development. So that's, that's why I highlight them uh, in this situation. So uh, thank you. That was, uh, that was also a good question. Uh, Okay, so for doc DOCX we have uh, these issues, uh, and I have uh, for in this case OXML table styles. This is the old uh, bug number from 2011 when the exact feature was requested, and this is about uh, only OXML interop part. So uh, these are kind of interdependent here. Okay, some more in DOCX topic. Um, yeah, so a lot of uh, these are uh, having very 
few applications, but uh, but still, uh, sometimes you even want to be um, feature-wise compatible um, with uh, with Word. And uh, for example, the displaying track changes in the annotations bar is kind of annoying for actual users just because they are used to it. So what can we do? Uh, okay, well... What is, what is a smart justify? Smart justify is a... Um, it's a very nice feature from Word, and, but also from other um, more complicated typesetting software, which means uh, if you put some text as justified alignment. Traditionally, uh, word processors have been able to uh, grow the space uh, or the uh, white of the space between the words. And that, that made the, the paragraph justified. But the smart justify can also shrink the space, uh, as far as I understand. And that was happening since the word 2013. And we don't have that still. But it would be really nice to have uh, Russell, yes? I started with more third committee, so I here already ha I have results. So because it started with uh, research to analyze what the algorithm in Microsoft Office, because it's somehow it's hidden and break the compatibility immediately when uh, implemented by Microsoft. Yeah. Uh, so thank I you. That, that's a good uh, good news. Yeah, that's excellent news, thank you. And also one more, uh, this is a real enterprise level feature, um, which is restrict editing in documents. Mm. End of the list. And of course, uh, we have still ugly areas in DOCX. Uh, I won't read the complete list, um, quite a few still. Okay, uh, I still have 10 slides and 5 minutes. It's going to be fun. Uh, okay, uh, there are some not so relevant uh, looking uh, meta bugs which are listed here, which may or may not worth uh, having on own, uh, own meta bug or even they, they are worth a little bit more uh, investigation, but that's uh, something for the QA team, I, I believe, uh, which may be interesting for them. Okay, on to generic OXML. Uh, yes, it's um, still a uh, few types of uh, chart listed here, uh, exactly like nine, which we don't have, but would be nice to have implemented and uh, some and some borderline graphics uh, mm. related uh, features and it would be really nice to have these uh, all filed uh, as tender ideas perhaps for the foundation tenders because recently i have uh, i have found some old document from Apache uh, Open Office doc, uh, Bugzilla, which was from 2005, from French community, where they were uh, collecting some uh, enhancement wish list for Sun for Open Office 2.0, and uh, they have listed that it would be very nice to have this uh, chart type of surface chart and pi of pi and bar of pi charts and. Uh, they believed it would be really useful for OpenOffice 2.0, which was in 2006 or so, but we still don't have this, so it would be really nice if we could somehow uh, uh, make the life of people who are still using these uh, very nice looking charts a little bit easier. Uh, okay. Some XLSX tip type uh, important bugs are listed here. 
uh, just for um, having it collected and uh, it would be really nice to have some uh, different type like gradient and fill pattern background for cell backgrounds these were supported and requested since ages okay what else more important bugs for xlsx um yeah and of course uh, there are ugly looking things in xlsx Change tracking is one of these, uh, but it looks like kind of deprecated even in Excel, so maybe not so important. But uh, equations in shapes and formatting as table is uh, super useful. And of course, we have uh, under-researched uh, areas in Excel SX as well. I don't know, maybe this aggressive competitor's metabug could be thrown out, but the rest probably needs uh, more investigation. And for PPTX, I was a nice collection of things. Uh, maybe good for uh, tender, especially this uh, equation on um, equation object on drawing shapes, because people love to use that especially when they are uh, for example teachers who are uh, creating a slideshow for for class and they put their mathematics uh, formulas on drawing shapes because that's the convenient way in powerpoint and there is a lot of complaints about that and of course in this is filed in pptx for some reason but I believe it's uh, more universal, so it should be really uh, generic UXML, the 3D model issues, which are completely missing feature, and uh, also text level effect issues, which is like putting uh, a gradient on your text, and it looks like pretty in pptx presentations and we have uh, a few under researched areas like rtl writing in pptx as well but i i, mm, I believe character formatting is pretty much uh, mm, well researched in this area okay and uh, time is up any any question or we can move yes yeah um, I wanted to ask about um, the involvement of the, the ecosystem companies um, relative to other developers in, in the different aspects of, of Microsoft compatibility, Microsoft Office compatibility. And obviously, all, all, or the vast majority of users care about this, but I would guess that, uh, that commercial clients are particularly find particularly important to have the better compatibility with the documents they work on. So mm -hmm. can you characterize how much of the effort, both, both of the, like, the bug reports and the effort on fixing them uh, is carried by the, the ecosystem companies mm -hmm. and how much by other people? Oh, very good question. What's the ratio of uh, ecosystem companies and, and volunteers between, uh, for fixing and reporting bugs? Uh, and uh, well, for big feature developments, uh, it's mostly the um, ecosystem companies, like the floating table work and the um, document teams and uh, multicolor gradients. Those were uh, funded by uh, by definitely the um, ecosystem. Bug reporting is mostly community of course and end users but I also report a lot of uh, interop bugs for in the name of our customers as well and uh, I believe that it's the uh, it's similar with uh, Collabora it could be uh, which is about half and half of my work so 
other half is not related to uh, interoperability, just plain features or crashes or something like that. Um, yeah. I believe um, it's mostly, I would not, not say a percentage, but it's mostly the ecosystem companies who can sell these sort of um, issue or feature improvements to their customers. But it's uh, kind of obvious that it's uh, uh, either not enough uh, customers or um, budget limitations are there and it's, uh, it's a lot more uh, that would be needed. So maybe foundation will be able to restart tendering uh, very soon and uh, after sorting out legal problems which we have as, as board. Uh, so yeah, uh, I hope I, I will be able to uh, report better numbers next year.